The type of bonding that we see when we put together amino acids are called peptide bonds. They're based on amide bonds, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But when we have strings of amino acids, these are called peptide chains, and they're usually named by how many of the amino acids we have. So if I have two amino acids, we'd call it a dipeptide. Uh, if I have three, it's a tripeptide, etc. So if I'm putting those together, there are ways that we can name them based on the identity of the amino acids. So in this video today, I want to talk a little bit about how we bond together amino acids and then how we name those bonded together amino acid chains or peptide chains. So that's kind of the goal. So let's take serine and valine here. So we have our R groups here on the side as we're getting used to looking at amino acids. I have the carboxylic end, carboxylic acid, the amine group, and here's my alpha carbon with all of its chirality here. And then we have the same operation over here. We have an amine group, we have our alpha carbon, here's our carboxylic acid group, and then here's our R group for valine. So when I look at these things and I think about the chemistry that they're going to do, I, you can see that I've broken out the amine group on this one so that I'm distinctly showing the hydrogens that are bonded to it as opposed to um, these guys here, which I have in the more condensed formula, so H2N. Now when I put these two things together, then the hydroxide on one, the carboxylic acid, and the hydrogen on the other are going to combine together and be removed as water. So this is a dehydration reaction. We're removing water from this particular, um, from these particular amino acids. And then when we put them together, what's left over is this kind of combination of my amino acids. So if we're going to sketch this guy out, I'll give myself some space here. So my arrow, I'm going to kind of go here so that I have enough room. And here's my carbonyl. And now it's attached to the amine group of the second one because we got rid of the hydroxide here in the hydrogen that forms water and now this guy just has the one hydrogen left over here's my alpha carbon on my valine which is attached to the carboxylic acid and then here's this which is the rest of my R group here and here's this which is the rest of my R group here Okay, so what we've made, what we've formed together when we got rid of this water is this bond right here. This is what we're looking at. So we have the carbonyl group that's attached to a nitrogen. Well, if we remember from our organic chemistry, a carbonyl that's adjacent to a nitrogen like this is called an amide group. And in the context of proteins, we call this a peptide bond. So it's an amide bond or a peptide bond, because that's the functional group that we're looking at here. So this peptide bond is what holds together the individual amino acid, what are called residues. Residues. So each of the individual amino acids in a protein is called a residue, for reasons that I don't know. That's just sort of the term. And then I can keep adding them on in the same way. So I can use the hydroxyl group here and the amine group of another amino acid and then we can do a dehydration where we get rid of the water and then it'll tack another one on the side. It's another peptide bond and then we'll have a long string of these things. So uh, we'll have peptide chains. This together, we have two amino acids. This is called a dipeptide. Di, of course, our prefix which refers to two. We can have tripeptides which would be three amino acids that are put together. We can have polypeptides, which we usually just mean, you know, many or lots. And then we can have oligopeptides, which gets into kind of the hundreds. And oligopeptides are really proteins at that point. And we'll get into in future videos kind of what proteins 
R and the different levels of structure that come about because of these R groups that are sticking off of the end of them. But this is kind of our level of complexity when we're starting to talk about peptide bonds. So usually when we're talking about long chains of amino acids, then polypeptide tends to be the word that you use. You can use peptide chains. If you're talking about two or three in particular, you can stick with the di or tripeptide. Otherwise, you can just talk about proteins. Oligopeptides is a little less of a common one. That's usually something in the hundreds of amino acids, thousands of amino acids. Okay. So a little vocab there for you as well. Now let's talk about naming. So if we have, the, in this case I have three amino acids, so that would make this a tripeptide. Then there's a couple features when we start to put these things together that I want to mention. As we get longer chains of these things, we can talk about the chain that starts with the amine group or the side that starts with the amine group, and we call this the N terminal, or the amino terminal. So it's the terminal side, the end, that has the nitrogen in it. Uh, we call this side then with the carboxylic acid, this would be our C terminal, or the carboxyl terminal, or a number of different things. I like N terminal and C terminal, personally. Okay, so if I have three of them that are stuck together, again, as we're kind of getting used to interpreting what we're looking at here, we have our amine group, here's our amide, kind of this guy here. So here's our peptide bond here, here's a peptide bond here. So we have three amino acids, two peptide bonds, and then we have our R groups that are sticking out here. So here's a methyl group, here's kind of a branched, group for valine, we have a thiol here with our cysteine, so we have our different R groups here. These R groups then can go to interact with each other, and we'll talk about that chemistry again in future videos, but let's just focus on the naming here. The name of this thing, so our three residues here, alanine, valine, and cysteine, we're going to use uh, the YL endings for everything but the C terminal side. So the name of this thing is going to be alanyl, YL ending, you recognize those from organic chemistry, valyl, again we take the root and we end it with YL, and then cysteine. So the, the naming rules for naming these peptide chains is that the C terminal gets to stay as the name of the amino acid. But everything else in the chain, everything leading up to it, is going to be the root and then a YL ending. Which again is familiar for anything that we're looking at with like organic molecules. When you have things that are stuck to other things, then we talk about the ill ending, like methyl groups. This is a methyl group, it's a methyl group a methane that is stuck to something else. So these things are stuck to the C terminal, essentially. So you'd call this alanyl valyl cysteine. <laughs> That's tricky. Alanyl valyl cysteine. There we go. Now, because we also have these three letter designations as well as the single letter designations, then you can see this sometimes abbreviated as those three letters in kind of a chain like this. Allyl val cis, and that would be another way to designate the same protein or the same tripeptide. It's not quite a protein at this point. And we can also do the individual letter designation. So we can say A, B, C, and that also tells me that same protein or that same uh, tripeptide sequence. And then we can kind of see how this would build up. So I keep using the term protein because I'm so excited to talk about proteins. This is still a a tripeptide, we're in smaller chains, but as we start to build up to the larger proteins, you can see how long these names are going to get, because if we have a hundred of these things, then you'd have a hundred of these three-letter designations, or a hundred of these individuals, and then we'd have the actual names uh, spelled out. That Those protein names get quite long quite quickly, 
Um, there are fun YouTube videos of people reading out the names of proteins in this format, um, and it takes quite a long time to do so. And they probably do it more eloquently than I just did <laughs> with this one, because it's kind of tricky. They're kind of tongue twisters, so fun to practice reading out loud. Okay, so a little bit about the structure, a little bit about the naming. As always, if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.